Jens TFI here with a visual extravaganza for your eye holes. Before I get started, just FYI, I'm using Inventor 2017. Can't guarantee this is going to work into the future. You never know what's going to happen in the future, what they're going to change, but I don't think they will. And I can't guarantee backwards compatibility either, but I think this should be all right for a good few versions of Inventor back into the past. As long as you're not on something archaic, everything should be all right. Right. So what's the point of this video? Well, I'm just going to show you how to create your own texture based on the Autodesk Appearance Library, which uh, has a source of textures stored on your hard disk, which you might not know that they're there, and you might not know what to do with them. You don't necessarily need to do this. It's just good to know how to create your own textures in the event that you do want to use something unique and modify it to your liking, rather than just use a standard off-the-shelf texture that you're not entirely sure how to manipulate. So that's kind of the point of what, I'm, what we're doing here. So, if you go to the view, not the view tab, the getting started tab, go to projects, and then select your project that you're working with, and then expand appearance libraries. Now, I think by default, Inventor uses this one here, the Inventor Material Library, which doesn't have that many textures in it. But if you double click the Autodesk appearance library, this one here has, I think it's got over a thousand different texture types in here from masonry to metals to plastics to fabrics to to wood there's loads and loads and loads of textures in here it's it's much richer it's got more detailed textures in here and these are the ones that Autodesk they, they want you to use if you're going to be sending your models between different Autodesk products because it's a, a shared library between different Autodesk applications so when you're moving models between different programs you don't lose your textures so that's the one there that's got the most textures in so what we're going to do is look at the source files for this library show you what's in there, and then we'll look at how to make our own texture and what settings we've got for, for modifying that texture. It's just it's just good to know how to do these things. So we're going to click Done, and we're going to open up Windows Explorer and go to C, and you want to go to Program Files x86, Common Files, Autodesk Shared. You want to go to Materials, Textures, and then you've got Folders 1, 2, and 3. Folder 1 is the low-resolution image library. So it's it's got almost the same textures in as folder 2 and 3, they're just a lower resolution. Folder 2 is the medium resolution folder uh, texture library, which again is the same textures, they're just a, a larger size, they're more detailed, and then folder 3 is the large resolution image library, which has the biggest of all the textures, they're the largest, ladies, uh, but the, the bigger the image, the bigger the file size, the more, but the more detailed it is, so it looks a lot better. So this is what it looks like. So this is folder 3. Folder 3 doesn't have as many textures in as folder 1 and 2. Uh, so there may be textures in folder 1 and 2 which aren't in 3, but you can have a look through it and see what there is and see which one you want. But when we go into folder 3, you can see there is a ton of different textures in here to use, from, like I said, from masonries through to woods, metals, plastics, all kinds in here. And we've got a mixture of actual textures and also bump maps. So when you're looking through the, f the files, anything with bump in the name, so for example there, thermal moisture, shingles, blah, 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 dot bump, that's a bump map. And that's what Inventor uses to layer on top of a, a texture file to give your model depth. It gives a sort of three-dimensional appearance to the texture, hence bump map. So there's a mixture of actual textures in here and bump maps. And all of these can be used to create your own new materials. They're, they're already used within the Autodesk material, uh, material Library or the Autodesk Appearance Library. But we can create our own new materials using these as well. And it just, it just helps you understand how the textures work and then you can, it just gives you a greater degree of flexibility. So what I'm going to do is come back to Inventor, and then we're going to use my graphics card here to model a floor. We're just going to drop, we're just going to model a floor, and then apply one of these textures to a floor. So we'll go to Assemble, Create a New Component, we're going to call this, I don't know, Wood Floor. And then just to be proper, we'll make it a reference part because it doesn't exist. Uh, it's, not, it's not in the bomb. And then click OK, and then we're just going to make a new work plane, which intersects the bottom of the graphics card, something like that. And then I can now model uh, just a rough floor. I don't really care what the size is. It just needs to look like a floor. So we'll zoom out a little bit, and then we'll make a massive rectangle, something like that. That'll do. Then we'll extrude that down by... But again, the depth doesn't even matter. Right, so that floor component is the same color as the background, hence why it's difficult to see. It's just a white texture. And then we need to go into the appearance editor now and create our own texture and apply it to this part. So to do that, we're going to select the appearance editor up at the top. And then if as long as you've got the Autodesk appearance library active in your project file, it should give you all the textures here, which reference that folder we were just looking at here. But 
do you see what I mean? It's not it's not easy to see what these are going to turn out to. They've tried the hardest. They've applied them to different objects like walls and cubes and spheres. But again, it's just personal preference. I find it a lot easier to recognize what the texture is by looking at a large thumbnail like this rather than them being wrapped around an object like this. So you can either use one of these straight onto the model or we can make we just make our own. To make our own, you select this little globe down here at the bottom and then it lets, it lets you make a new blank material based on a material. So Inventor's saying, right, well, what texture are you going to be applying? What, what kind of model are you going to be applying this texture to? Is it metal? Is it going to be wood? Is it going to be glass or plastic? And based on which template you use, it's going to give you a specific set of properties in this template which dictate how the texture is going to appear on the model. So if you select a wood, it's going to ask you, is it varnished? If it's metal, it's going to ask you, is it anodized? Is it aluminium? Is it brass? And then it'll change the appearance of the texture based on the template that you pick. So we'll go for wood, and then it says, right, here's a new texture. It's called it default wood, and it's just give you a bog standard default out the box appearance, which we're not going to use, obviously. So we'll start by giving it a new name. So we'll call this, I don't know, dark wood flooring. And then to change the image that it's going to use, to change the actual texture that we want with this uh, new texture that we're creating, it's not obvious. You click the you click the words, <laughs> click that, and then that loads up the folder with the textures. And if it doesn't, if it takes it to your desktop, then you just go browse C drive, program files, x86, common files, yada, 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 till you get to three and then mats. And now we can pick one of these textures to use with, uh, with our model. So I'm going to go for a dark wood. Let's go for beech wood chocolate brown i like the look of that one so we'll go for this one here double click that and it'll load the texture and wrap it around this cube here to give you an idea of what it's going to look like and then the rest of the settings here are specific to wood is it stained what kind of finishing is it was it useful flooring or furniture so we've got some specific properties unique to wood if we'd gone for something like metal then the textures are now unique to metal is it polished is it brushed is it chrome what is it so it's, it's quite nice. It's quite nice how they've done that. I really do like that. Okay, so to make this work and to, to see the results of what we're doing, we need to apply this texture to the floor. So we're just going to select this drop down up here and then select uh, dark wood flooring, which is there. Okay, so that's applied the texture to the floor. And it looks pretty nice, actually. That looks pretty crispy. I am liking the look of that. The graphics card model itself is quite small. It's only about a foot long, something like that. And these are meant to be laminate floor or real wood floor planks, which are quite big in size. So the scaling is about right, actually, but we can change the scaling of the image if you want it to be larger or smaller. So we can go back to the appearance editor, right click on dark wood flooring and then select edit. And that'll take us back into the properties which might fly behind the application. No, it, didn't. it, just, it just didn't come up. Brilliant. All right, then. So, OK, so to get the best feedback for the changes that you're making. The next thing you want to do is select the view tab up here and then change the visual style to realistic and then watch the texture in the background. That'll then change to look more realistic. There you go. So that's now updated. It looks smoother. It's more interactive with the environment. It's it's, it's changing it to the realistic style of, of lighting as well within, within Inventor without going into too much detail. Just set it to realistic and it looks a lot better. You get better feedback. Okay, so for staining, if you select stain, it sort of increases the saturation on the texture. It's this Everything from this point onwards is personal preference. It's entirely up to you what you want, but that increases the saturation and the brightness on the image to represent it being stained. For the finish, you can say, is it unfinished? Is it like a matte flat color? Or do you want it to be satin and varnished to make it more glossy? Do you want it to be full glossy and varnished? And that'll just increase the reflectivity of the flooring at the same time. And then we've also got this here, which is relief pattern. Relief pattern is a bump map, but it's not a bump map based on an image that we select from the folder. This is a bump map based on wood grain. So this is Autodesk saying, right, we've got a bump map, we've applied it to the model, or the texture and just drag the slide bar here to increase or decrease the amount of grain effect that you want in the wood so if we just zoom in to the wood just to see what's actually going to happen here and then increase that you can kind of see what it's doing it's increasing the like dimples in the wood grain and it's up to you it's up to you how much you put on this entirely personal preference if you want the wood to really stand out to be exaggerated then you can increase that even further. If you just if you want to just have a very slight amount of uh, of grain 
texture, then you can just maybe leave it about there perhaps. And then based on the finish that you go for, you'll get different results. Obviously the most exaggerated of all the, of all the grain is gonna be the high gloss varnish, which is that one there. Uh, but then obviously if you drag it all the way, <laughs> it just looks ridiculous. But you've got full control there over what you want it to be. All right, once that's done, you can click OK. And then that's pretty much it. If you want to leave it there, you can do. You can now go off, set it away, doing a render, or you can change the size of the image if you do want the planks to be larger or smaller. So we can right click on that again, go back and edit to change the size of the image. Again, it's not obvious. You've got to select this little box here, this rectangular box here, and that opens up a separate texture editor where you can change either increase or decrease the size of the image, which is this area here. So at the moment, the texture size itself, the tile that it's using for the flooring is 100 centimeters by 100 centimeters. If that's too large, we can decrease this to say, I don't know, 50 by 50. And then once that's done, you should see the flooring update in the background. Sometimes it doesn't happen absolutely immediately. Sometimes it does. It's sometimes hit or miss, but fortunately this time it has updated straight away. So you can see that's decreased. It's half the size of the of the tiled images. And it just looks it just looks nicer to me. I prefer that. It's condensed all the, the texture. The resolution is sharper and crisper. But arguably it doesn't look as realistic as the flooring looks quite small in comparison to the graphics card. But it's 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 down to your personal preference. And then once that's done, you can change your view style to perspective, you can turn your shadows on, and then we can start to get something that starts to look pretty nice. I'll so tell you what, we'll turn off that work plane, get rid of that, because that looks cheesy. We'll jump back up to the assembly so the graphics card comes back into focus, and then we can turn on the shadows and see what things look like. And this is obviously, you, you, the only reason you're really applying a texture like this to the model is to get a nice, decent render at the end of it. So we can go back to the view tab, and we can turn on shadows, that puts on the ambient shadows underneath the model. This floor here is now acting as the floor, so shadows are being cast onto the floor, which looks nice. Uh, reflections, well, you wouldn't really get reflections uh, on wood anyway, but the inventor only casts reflections onto the ground plane, and that's not classed as the ground plane, so reflections won't work unless you move the ground plane to B on here, which I'm not going to do because I don't want reflections anyway. And then that's pretty much it. That's looking pretty creamy. I do like that, actually. That does look really nice. Now, if you look above... You can see how much reflectivity we've got in the wood. That does look a bit too unrealistic, but depending on the render that you do, the final render, you might not see it looking like that. Trial and error. All the renders that you do from Inventor are trial and error till you get what you think looks nicest. So that's pretty much it. Once you go back to the material editor, it's up to you now what you do. The world's your oyster when it comes to creating textures. You can create as many or as, as, as few as you want, and you can reference any of those tiles in the appearance library uh, folder, this one here. You can create as many or as few of these as you want, and all of these are available to be used in textures with an inventor. Entirely up to you. One last point as well, if you don't want to use a template, if you're creating something, and you, it's neither of these, it's none of these, you can just select a new generic appearance and it'll create a new texture based on it being not really anything specific and it'll give you a broad range of properties to help you manipulate the image. So for example, reflectivity, bump map, cutouts, transparency, color tint, the image, this is where you select the image to use. And that's a generic appearance, which is quite good. It's sort of a catch-all text uh, template to use for any texture that you want. So that's pretty much it, guys. That'll do for now. That's how you create your own texture based off of a template using one of the tiles in the appearance library. You don't have to do that. Pretty much all of these templates here, all of these tiles are already used in the Autodesk appearance library. It's just nice to know how to create your own and then manipulate it using the properties within the, uh, the template that it gives you. So that'll do for now, guys. Thank you very much. Hopefully that video was useful. It'll give you an insight into how to create your own textures and make stuff look awesome. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Toodles!